We have a bunch of random properties using the map function, also known as convert one thing to another. Convert this array to a bunch of random properties in an array. We're going to convert those button properties that we just got to a bunch of buttons. We'll map, we'll put them in. The item is our random button properties. From that item, we can get a new potato button. So we'll say item image three all and call that M X I Y rotation. Log these guys out to see the buttons that you just created. And again, they're already going to have their X Y and rotation as random values for us, ready to go. Load, and you can see our buttons there. And these are all the properties that Pixie gives it. Underscore implies private. The others do not. And if we scroll down, we can see our random X and Y, which is kind of hard. You have to click the setter and get her there. There you go. So the X and Y, so those buttons are ready to go, but they're not added to the stage. Now we could add these all at once, but most games like Whack-A-Mole happen over time. Let's use a timer to do that. We'll say interval ID, which is what a set interval gives back, as opposed to a timeout ID, what is a set timeout gives you back. It'll call this function every in seconds. In our case, we'll say one. So every one second, call this function. We're gonna take one out of the array each time. If there are any buttons left, and at the start of the game, there's total of five, but at the end of the game, there's gonna be none left. So that's when we know the game is over. So if there is some there, we're gonna get the next one. Buttons pop. Pop means get rid of the last element of the array and return it to me. So we're popping it out of the end there. Add it to the stage. Otherwise, We'll go ahead and log game over. We will clear the interval ID so it stops calling this function every single time. Add one more log just so you can see it. Next button. Before we test this guy out, let's go ahead and add the callback up top. On potato clicked. And this is the same callback for every single potato. Each one, when you click on it, it's gonna go ahead and add 100 to the score and update the score on the screen. Add that as the property for our get random potato button properties. It gets randomness except for the callback, which is always going to be the same. We want every potato to do the exact same thing. So we'll hit save, reload the page here. And you can see that every second, a new button appears on the screen. And when it's done, it says game over. So we got five calls to the next button because we had five random potato buttons in our array. You can see the rotation's random, the position's random. But that is that they all appear and stay on the screen. We only want them to show on the screen for about a second as well give the button an ability to disappear function on every single button called get ready to hide and we'll go ahead and give it a timeout ID very similar to the interval ID but the timeout only runs once where an interval runs over and over and over and over forever so we'll say after one second we want this button to log you missed this potato and then we're gonna go ahead and have the button remove itself from the stage or wherever we add it. It could be some other container, we don't know. However, when you click it, we don't want this to run because it's already removed itself. Right before we call our callback, we'll go ahead and clean our, our mess. We'll say if the button does have a hide ID, then we'll go ahead and clear that timeout. So don't, don't run the hide. We'll call this right when we show the function Show the button, that way it starts right when it appears. Now when we click and save and reload, you'll see it is there, but then disappears. And we didn't click on any, so it shows that we missed this potato five times. If we reload this, we can click on two of them, and we got 200 points, but we'll miss the rest, and you'll see that we missed three of them. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is your potato game. It's a basic whack-a-mole game. Taking random properties and creating buttons out of them, but notice that they're just simple JavaScript objects. So you can extend the buttons to have extra functionality. You can give them new methods. You can extend or decorate existing Pixie components to do whatever you wish. I'm a verbose coder that's in 120 lines of code. Not bad. Cross-platform works on phones and browsers and iPads. 